Hamilton's first son as a subtitle person. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to thank you for talking with us today. Of course. Um, so first of all, how is Jax doing these days? Oh, he's great. He's three and a half already, coming up on four. So it just goes by in about a week and a half. But he's lovely. Just a real joy. And how has his life changed since the end of the book? Because the book ends sort of on a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. so he might be moving to Chicago after that. No, he and uh, Sam, his mom is Amy, and Amy and Sam did split up about, uh, not too long after the book ends, but they have worked out something kind of amazing, especially because they're so young, and they live in the same county, and they're raising Jacks individually, but co-parenting, and I'm kind of amazed. That's fabulous. Yeah. So do you still get to spend a lot of time with him? Yeah, a lot of time. That's yeah. Great. yeah. Oh, pretty cool. Does he call you grandma? No, Nana. Nana. My grandma name is Nana. I see. Yeah, that was my mom's grandma name, and my son, Sam, my mom was a really handful, and, but my son was so dear to her and with her, and I also want to honor her by having taking on her grandma name. That's great. Yeah, that's very sweet. Um, well, so how have things changed for Jack since the book ended? Oh, well, his parents aren't together, and he's grown up. He's become a big boy, and he's um, he was just starting to walk when the book ended, and I mean, everything that changes between one and four, he's extremely articulate and uh, really into books and really into, he, his dad has this gift that I don't have, which is this sort of spatial intelligence in his hand, because I'm like so verbal. Yeah. And everything's like a ticker tape of ideas and thoughts and images. And um, Sam has this sort of intelligence that you would associate with an architect or something. Mm -hmm. And a, he's a designer. And so, um, and Jax has that. He, He's a killer Lego guy. <laughs> I mean, he can make stuff that just leaves your mouth hanging open. So, and, you know, everything about his life has changed, and I, and a lot of stuff has stayed the same. He comes to church with me, to comes to Sunday school. He um, sees a lot of both, you know, his parents. He sees a lot of me. So, you know, everything changed, and a lot of things stayed the same. Just right. like real life. Sure. Yeah. Um, in your experience, having raised Sam and now being around Jack so much, what do you think is the most interesting year of a child's life, would you say? God, I'll tell you, when Sam was 17, it got way too interesting <laughs> for me. I couldn't even write about it. It was so interesting. <laughs> but um, it's hard to say. I mean, they're all just so different. And um, it's just nothing like an infant. I just they, I just find them heartbreakingly adorable. And then when they start to put words together and they start putting that making that connection between sounds and objects or actions, and um, that is really thrilling to me. Yeah. And of course, all I want is for them to get to the books. And I feel like yes. as soon as you get them to the books, <laughs> you're going to be okay. So, I mean, I've been telling kids on the road, if you read, if you're a reader, you're going to have a good life. It's that simple. Yeah. If you're a person who falls in love with books, you're going to have a good life. That's certainly the message that I have to pass on to my kids as well. Yeah. yeah. So, what books did you read with Jax? Oh, God, you know. Do you have kids yet? I have one. Yeah, they only want the same book <laughs> over and over and over. And, and I'm always crying out, I can't bear it. <laughs> so he's begun crying out, no, I can't bear it. I won't be able to bear it if we don't read Green Eggs and Ham. <laughs> Nana, I won't be able to bear it. And he was like 40 pounds. And so, um, Definitely Green Eggs and Cat in the Hat. He just loves, he loves Curious George because it's so funny that he's such a good little monkey but things just always get away from him because <laughs> he's so curious. Yeah. And um, so, and he loves Berenstain Bears. And I haven't gone to sort of the classic shed. I mean, he loves Pooh Bear. Mm -hmm. he loves Winnie the Pooh. Um, but we've sort of, you know, I want to branch out a little and start moving him to slightly more, um, well, to new books and to, but they don't want the new experience. Yeah. And I say, well, go to the store, we'll get a new Dr. Seuss book. I won't be able to bear it, <laughs> Nana. And I'll say, we read Green Eggs and Ham for your nap. I can't read it again. I just, I, and he says, I just want it so badly. And so we're drawing Bear and saying Bear ABC. It's not the regular books, mm -hmm. but the, um, cause it's so thrilling for them to be putting the alphabet together right. and the, and yeah, I, mean, I know these three books better than I know my own life. I know the ants, the apricots, the ape apartments, the, the angleworm with the little green hat, the um, Aunt Alice's airplane, and I mean, it's just hilarious, but he loves those books. 
Were they the same books that Sam loved? No. Sam loved, um, well, eventually what Sam got, was here for was the advent of Harry Potter. Oh, yes. So that was probably like eight, when he was eight or so. He was right. born in 89, so I'm not sure. But I think mid-90s, right? That's right. And, um, yeah, he read all the same Dr. Seuss books, and um, he loved construction books more than Jack's does. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he loved Winnie the Pooh. And there were a few books that I, I thought would become world famous, but they were books people thrust at us at bookstores, bookstore right. owners, you know how they can be. <laughs> and they would thrust a book at us and it would become our family book. We still have them. Yeah. And Jack's loves them, but they're different. They're, they didn't become world famous books that the whole world knew. There was one about a parrot um, who, who knows all of his color flashcards. And has a very, he lives with a very, very, very rich little boy whose family has a limousine. He's really the boy's best friend. And one horrible day, the wind blows the color flashcards out. But luckily, the father lets the butler, the chauffeur, <laughs> drive the little boy around looking for his parrot. And so it's all about color. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just so brilliant. I haven't written anything that can touch it. <laughs> and so that's uh, one of our books. But... Um, Sam had a, a little trouble with the dark, and so we read a lot of books about go away, big green monster. And we read a lot yeah. of those books where you see that that you have control over the monsters. You just yeah. have to say, get out of here, and they can't stick around if a boy fiercely tells them to get out. May I have your attention, please? The library closes in 20 minutes. If you have any books or other materials that need to be checked out, or if you need to register for a library card, please make your way to the Retired desk on the first floor. Thank you. Real life. Yes. <laughs> Interfe interferes. Exactly. Um, well, I just have a couple more questions sure. for you. I don't want to keep you a long time, but um, what would you say was the most surprising thing about being a grandmother? For everyone that's here for the Salon 615 event with Ann Lamont, please be in the conference center by 545. Thank you. The most surprising thing about being a grandmother is um, how little uh, the parents are interested in your thoughts and opinions on how to raise a child properly. So I thought because I was uh, 55 at the time um, and I'd raised a child who's lovely most of the time mm -hmm. that everybody would would um, want to know what I thought about this or that or toilet training or Sunday school or preschool or this, and they just really want to do it themselves. So yeah. of course, that was very hurtful. And um, I was surprised by how crazily you fall in love, because I, I felt like I had the experience with my son, and um, you, you're just pathetic, pathetic in the presence of grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a blessing to get to live near him and to see him so much. I, I was surprised. You know, it's always surprising to find out how nuts you are, and how controlling, <laughs> and how um, little you really trust in life just sorting itself out naturally, because I just want to get in there and get things to happen the way I think would be best. And that constantly surprises me, but it's nothing new. Yeah. Well, you sound like a wonderful grandmother, and I'm sure he's very happy to have you in his life. Yes, I think I should. <laughs> He's, um, this is called what we call life on life's terms. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, you know, the book, I don't think of the book as a grandma book, though, so much as a... Check um, one. Check two. Is it all hopeless? No. <laughs> can I'm you edit sure. it all? I'm not sure. But I think people okay. will find it endearing. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, we're video. having a real life sort of moment here. But, <laughs> you know, I, I love having recorded so many moments of Jax's first year, but it's really more of a parenting book. It's mm -hmm. about having a grown child, a 19-year-old, granted, a young grown yeah. child, but um, who, has a, who has a baby himself. And it's about the same old things that offer the instructions about. It's about how you're ultimately not in charge of much, yeah. how you have to keep practicing trust and surrender, but the, it, it ends at the water's edge of being a mother. You don't feel like a lot, you don't want to do trust and surrender. You just want them to be okay all the time and happy. Yeah. And, um, and so it's really, it's really about uh, Sam and I, Sam really growing up, helping to grow up very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's about helping to come to some challenges, huge, 
10 years before I thought we would. Yeah. And it's about, um, it's about the nature of being a parent where you're uh, desperately on their side, you're afraid, you're proud, you're very, very curious, and how ultimately you can't walk on their hero's journey with them. They get to pick their life, they get to pick their spiritual life, they get to pick their intellectual life, and you can't run alongside them on their hero's journey with a snack box, you know, <laughs> and water and sunscreen. They don't want you and it hurts them. It's right. injurious to do that. And that, for me, has been the hardest lesson of being a parent that I've had to learn and I'm still learning it. I mean, I want to bring, I want to make sure he has, like, chapstick. Birds, bees with him because it's going to be warm. And it's like, Annie, thank you for sharing. There's a great acronym in um, some assembly required of, of weight, of why am I talking, W-A-I-T. And I have to say that to myself all the time with Sam. Keep zip it, you know, zip it, zip it, because he gets to make his own mistakes. Yeah. Which I hate. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Well, Anna thank you so much for talking with us. It's You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.